So we just finished up with a lovely buffet breakfast at the Kirupi Hotel. Tell you what, buffets are dangerous. We've had now buffet dinner last night, buffet breakfast this morning, and I feel like I'm gonna, I'm gonna explode. So I might not eat much, eat much for the rest of the day. But we'll be off soon, uh, back in the car and on the road, and we've got probably another five or six hours of driving today, and that's excluding stops. So another long day ahead. So unfortunately, we won't be able to stay here much longer. Got to keep moving. Day five of our Drakensburg tour takes us from Cathedral Peak to the Golden Gate Highlands, with a stop at the amphitheater. It's a pretty short drive of less than 250 kilometers, but with almost 5,000 meters of elevation gain and loss, it wasn't going to be a walk in the park. Leaving the Cathedral Peak area, we have clear skies and a perfect view of Kafkin Peak, Monk's Cowl and Champagne Castle. We also have a clear view of the amphitheater to the north with the Sentinel on the far right, which we'd be hiking to a little bit later. It looks pretty close here, but because of the barrier that the mountains create, we actually have to take the long way around, circling the Sterkfontein Dam before coming around the western side of the Sentinel. The sad part is that there are so many things to see between Cathedral Peak and the amphitheater that we simply didn't have time for, like the Rockeries Pass and Mweni Needles, Bundini Pass and so much more. But we had to prioritize things and the amphitheater, as you will see, was definitely the right choice. We passed the Sterkfontein Dam with the town of Harry Smith and Plattberg up ahead and eventually turned left, moving towards the mountains again. So not too long ago we crossed into the Free State Province, so we've now left the uh, province of Brazil and Atoll, and we've just reached the sort of northernmost point of our entire trip. Which is a weird thing for, because for me the Drakensberg has always been, uh, when, when I've pictured it I've always pictured the southern Drakensberg uh, where the, the peaks are kind of south facing and we always do the south of the mountains so for me to come around the north now is a weird thing to wrap my head around but we're in the northern Drakensberg now and uh, tonight we'll be staying at Golden Gate Highlands National Park which is actually slightly south of where we are close to the town of Clarence in the Free State so yep new province and uh, I've actually never been on the side of the Free State before so this is all new for me and I'm soaking it all in. One of the worst parts about the northern Drakensberg are these large townships that you have to pass through. This one took us about 45 minutes to pass thanks to bad drivers, potholes, pedestrians in the road and way too many speed bumps. But eventually we come to the other side and start climbing up the mountains towards the Sentinel car park. So we've just paid our conservation fee at the at the gate. I think it's like 65 rand per person, which is nothing considering this is one of the most insane views uh, on earth. Um, we, we're driving along a road that's just going to take us higher and higher. And hopefully it takes us like pretty close to the Sentinel so we can get a really good view without having to walk the whole day. Um, we, we're planning to do a, a walk that's probably going to take us a kilometer and a half um, and gaining about 200 to 250 meters altitude so not ultra strenuous but we're going to have to put in a little bit of effort to, to get to the view site but I think it'll be worth it. Um, hopefully we can get a nice view of uh, Tugela Falls and even if we don't see Tugela Falls we're going to get a really nice view of the amphitheater. This was by far the worst road on our entire trip. You would not be able to get up here without a high clearance 4x4 and we had to chug up here pretty slowly in low range. It just goes to show it's always helpful to have a proper 4x4 even if you're staying in hotels and chalets. You never quite know when you might need it. Towards the top however the road becomes paved and soon we find ourselves at a parking lot. The view from the parking lot was amazing in itself. We were able to look down over the Tugela Gorge, over the many different layers of mountains around us and even back on some of the peaks that we'd passed over the last couple days. Right at the back, Kathkin Peak and Champagne Castle, Cathedral Peak in front of that where we'd started this morning, and of course, the Devil's Tooth, which forms the left wing of the amphitheater. 
but we wanted to get a proper view of the amphitheater itself so we headed out on foot for a short but pretty strenuous climb to a lookout point well we've just started this little hike we don't really know how far we're gonna go we'll just take it as it comes if we think that we have some more in us we'll keep going but uh, we don't want to exert ourselves too much because we do have to get home well not home to our uh, chalet tonight before it gets dark but yeah that's where we're heading that's a beast of a mountain so it should be interesting I did actually mark this hike out on Gaia GPS. Many people climb all the way up to Tugela Falls, but we didn't actually have time for that. So we picked out a lookout spot and got moving. And finally, we passed through a neck between the Sentinel and Witches and find ourselves face to face with the most insane view. The amphitheater with the Devil's Tooth right in front of us and the green Tugela Gorge below us. Well guys we made it to the viewpoint and I don't think we need to go any further. This is everything we could have ever hoped for. It's just insane. I'm going to turn around here so you can see what we, what we are seeing. So this is the amphitheater here curling all the way around from the sentinel which is above us to devil's tooth which is down that side and just some of the steepest cliffs on earth second highest waterfall on earth i think it drops what is it 948 meters or something like that it's over a thousand yards it's insane and it's like a lush green rainforest down here in, in these in these gullies so yeah i'd love to come back here sometime and kind of go up the Tugela Gorge at the bottom and just experience that but this is insane so glad we did this the amphitheater is widely regarded as one of the most impressive cliff faces on earth it's roughly three times the size of the total combined area of all the cliff faces in Yosemite's famous El Capitan and more than 10 times the size of El Capitan's southwestern face, which is the face that most people know. Below is the Tugela Gorge with the rapidly flowing Tugela River cutting a deep channel at the bottom. Many hikers walk up this gorge to experience the forests and the canyon walls, but it's the view of the amphitheater towering up above that really brings people out here. All of this is incredible in itself, but the main attraction here is without a doubt the 983 meter Tugela Falls. Unfortunately, we were here during the dry season, so the waterfall wasn't flowing as strongly as we'd like. But this right here is the highest or second highest waterfall on earth, depending who you ask. Turns out it's pretty hard to precisely measure waterfall height. But if the recently measured 983 meters is correct, the Tugela Falls is the highest in the world with Angel Falls in Venezuela a close second. We really didn't want to leave, but eventually we had to say goodbye and begin the downhill track back to the truck.
back on the tar road and heading west we make our way towards the Golden Gate Highlands where we'll be spending the night. This was a really scenic drive with rolling grassland on all sides and some really cool rock structures. This is the famous Mushroom Rock and Echo Ravine that you'll find standing above the Glen Renine campsite. We have to sign in for our accommodation at the office here before we head up to our chalets and that allows us to kind of soak in these crazy scenes for just a few minutes. The geology here is so different to what we've just seen at the amphitheater it really feels like a completely different world. We take the turn off to the Highlands Mountain Retreat and on towards our perfectly situated accommodation for the night, a log cabin high up in the mountains overlooking a massive valley. Well, we've just arrived at uh, Golden Gate Highlands at our little Highlands Cottage, which is a little log cabin above 2,000 meters elevation with a fantastic view of just some grasslands and mountains and everything uh, down below there. But we did not expect uh, the cottage itself to be so nice when we booked it. Take a look at this. Got a little space out here to just sit and have some coffee. And then inside, Got a fireplace, kitchen area. We won't be using the TV. We've got a good enough view outside. Bedroom. And yeah, just a fantastic spot. But we're not here for a little bit longer than a day, <laughs> unfortunately. But we just, once again, it's just one more place that we can come back to in the future and, and enjoy. So let's see what the next few hours holds. I'll tell you exactly what the next few hours held. Soaking it all in. Below us was a huge horizon of different colors, shadows and highlights, mountains and valleys. And for the first time on this trip, we saw sizable herds of animals. There were plenty of wildebeest grazing these hills and enjoying the evening sunshine. Nicole put together a snack platter with cheese, nuts and biltong and we just sat in silence for a bit, enjoying our surroundings. When the sun went down, the temperature suddenly plummeted and so we lit two fires, one inside to keep us warm and one outside to cook our dinner, chicken sasatis and bacon wrapped sausages. So we've reached an interesting stage in our, in our adventure um, in that we've kind of said goodbye to the Drakensberg Mountains which was the main focus of this trip 
obviously we're going to be seeing some cool stuff on on the way home as well tomorrow we get to see the the town of clarence uh we get to see the uh mountains sort of on the northern side of lesotho which are not the drakensberg but still very impressive and then uh we're also going to be camping at the Gerep dam which is the biggest dam in south africa so that'll be very cool but it's quite a weird feeling saying goodbye to the drakensberg there's just so much to see there that we probably could have done a a whole separate episode um, just visiting the places we didn't visit this time and there's so much more to discover I guess I could talk forever about this but you'll have a pretty good idea from the series you've just watched as to what to expect um, on these trips with dinner ready to serve we enjoyed our meal around the fireplace in the warmth of the log cabin and got an early night ready for the long drive home over the next two days.